review and thoughts of the 2018 movie Love, Simon. So, this is the last week of 2023 Pride. If this video ends up shorter than some of my other recent videos, it's not that I didn't care about this movie, it's just something came up that I have to deal with later today that so I have less time to record this than I thought I would, but yeah. I swear I did not intentionally try to hijack my Pride Month celebrating schedule with romantic love stories. I'm aware that there are great movies out there about the LGBTQ community that aren't that. Just, they're not the ones I have access to. Now, I watched this on Disney Plus behind the age lock. And also on Disney Plus, there is a Brie Larson hosted show about coming of age called Growing Up. Episode 5 is about a trans woman with good and bad that she experienced. The whole show is recommended. And the same thing for the short documentary Mac Wrestles. Now, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I liked a lot, came close to loving. There, uh, let's see, there will be some jokes in this video, none of them at the expense of members of minorities. And I will get into some serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, it's different from the book, so it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I won't be spoiling anything. You know, once once I get into the thoughts sections, the the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the movie, book, I like, and I will be spoiling the ending, in, you know, but I will verbally warn before I get into any spoilers and put up the spoiler sign at the top. So when you see that means there are spoilers. Now, the, let's see, so yes, I am a straight cisgender man. I don't say that because I'm afraid of someone mistaking me for gay, trans, any other letter of LGBTQ+, but to say up front, I don't have personal experience with certain other things depicted in this movie. I'll try to be respectful. I don't wish to offend any minority. And uh, let's see, yeah, I, I will be discussing some of them. If someone watching thinks I'm very, you know, a member of the LGBTQ community feels that I'm very wrong, you know, I'm, let me know. I'm opening open to taking it down or at least editing it. You know, if, if you just want me to edit, let me know which parts you'd like me to edit. And yeah, part of the reason I make this video is a number of Allosis Het individuals will not listen to anyone outside of their group and so might not hear anyone go into this movie who is an ally of LGBTQ. And let's see. Yeah, so the movie is rated PG-13, which I gotta say, considering the the free use of the F word, the F bomb in the book, you know, the like it didn't. I I wasn't very far into the book before I was like, okay, they're gonna remove most of these F bombs, which you know. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. I don't think the movie is that much worse for it, but it does, like, in the book, it really does feel, because it's, it's, you know, have you, have you met a teenager? They, they swear a lot. Now, but, but yeah, the movie is PG-13. You know, there is some, yeah. Let's see... There are some, there is some profanity in it. It just isn't, you know, yeah, not as much as the the book. And yeah, there's some alcohol content and some sexual sexuality and nudity, but it's it's mild. It's definitely something that, you know. I think it makes a lot of sense for it to have a, a PG thirteen. And the, the movie does also feature some homophobic language, but it is clearly used to illustrate, not endorse. And the audience is encouraged to dislike the characters using it. Now that brings us... Yes, so I've watched this once and I'm recording this right after the, you know, literally the credits just 
stop, just finished rolling. And then I hit record. Now the, let's see, yes, so plot. I'm going to be using the IMDb. Simon Spear keeps a huge secret from his family, his friends, and all of his classmates. He's gay. When that secret is threatened, Simon must face everyone, come to terms with his identity. And let's see the. Um, yeah, so this is one of those, like, there is some diverse casting, some diversity in casting. It doesn't really get that much into like the the personal experiences of like you know there's the there's the thing about him being gay and closeted but other than that like you know there's there are some people of color in in the movie and he's not the only gay character but it doesn't really explore the the others which I really think is a does a huge disservice but yeah, let's get into the writing. So, the book was written by Becky Albertalli, and the screenplay was written by Elizabeth Berger and Isaac Ap Aptiker. And I am not really familiar with anything else. <laughs> yeah, you know, they've done other stuff that's like for teenagers. They're, they're executive producers, and one of them is showrunner on Love, Victor, which was the, the show the, the, that was made, you know, after this as, you know, yeah, further exploring the, yeah, well, you know, they, they, they do a quite good job adapting the book, um, I really love the letters and the, the emails in the book, so I would have loved for them to fit all of them in, but I realized that would not be possible for a feature like, you know, you'd basically need like two movies for that. And I'd be in favor of that, but I realized that f for a lot of people, it's, you know, but, but yeah, um, because some of my favorite stuff is, most of my favorite stuff is in the movie from, from the book. And, it, yeah, just, you know, it's not like you can't do both. I recommend the, the book as well. Now, uh, right, by now it has been weeks, but I keep wanting to bring up the following, so now I will before Pride 2023 ends, which I sh should say, you know, normally, like I mentioned that I have a thing later today, normally I would just record, like, tomorrow, but then June is over, Pride Month 2023 is over, so, you know, making sure to do it today. And I only realized, you know, the thing that's come up only came up yesterday afternoon, so too late for me to do it yesterday. Now, yes, so the bigoted YouTuber Melanie Mac Go Boom has said that the reason that trans people get upset when you abuse them is that they are demonic. And this means you're all the more right to abuse them is the obvious implication, because demonic is bad. It's wild to me the massive mental leaps bigots will make to justify their bigotry, their vehement refusal to become better people. You know, it's just like... Just, yeah. Nobody is demonic. No, no person is demonic. There's no such thing. If you are abusing people, of course they're going to get upset, especially, like... Trans people are having their rights taken away right now. It's not demonic to get upset about losing your rights. She also recently, yeah, she also recently made a video freaking out about the interpretation that Gwen is trans. I'm gonna direct you to Organized Chaos and Eric Reloaded for great takedowns of her terrible arguments. The only thing I have to add is the way she can barely read the trans positive tweets without laughing, Mel. Turn off the nitrous oxide before you start recording. Now, back to the movie. Like Crush, a lot about this is like the cishet teen coming out, coming of age rom-com. You know, Crush does have substantially more like 
Actually, never, never mind. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the, mo the movie's based on the 2015 novel, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which is objectively a better title, but they felt that it was too long of a, of a title, and I can respect that. It is definitely, yeah, but that is a fantastic title, and that's the thing, you know, there's a lot of books that have better titles than the movies made out of them. Now, uh, Becky is by and unfortunately pressured into coming out because of concerns she was profiting off the LGBTQ community, and you know it's it's difficult. It's it's one of those things. Like obviously, it's not great for straight people to be profiting off. You know, these stories should be told by people who have experiences. You know, but yeah, it's it's difficult. You know, I get being anxious about having someone try to yeah you know make money off you know because you know that whenever straight people do a thing people are like oh, that's amazing and and you know the moment that like a minority does it's like i don't know i don't know if i like it because there's you know suddenly there's a million things wrong with it that just yeah now uh, right, so I'm to be true. Actors Kristen Bell, Neil Patrick Harris, Matt Bomer, Tyler Oakley, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Benji, Benji Pesek, Andrew Reynolds, Joey Grasseffa, screenwriter Martin Jero, Scott Hoying, and Superfruits Mitch Grassy were so moved by the film they bought out theaters in their hometown so the film would reach as many people as possible. That's great. And Jennifer Garner and Greg Berlanti were so proud of being a part of it that they did the same thing. Now, this is, yeah, this is actually only the second time that a major studio, in this case 20th Century Fox, or hold on, is it specifically 20th Century Fox? Anyway, yeah, has made a film that showcases a sympathetic portrayal of a leading homosexual character coming to terms with their orientation, you know, so just, it's wild that this is still something that's so, yeah. It, it needs to be way more common. Now, uh, right, dir director Greg Berlanti revealed in an interview that there were clips of the friend group, Simon, Leah, Abby, and Nick, that were filmed without the actor's knowledge. In order to capture the authenticity of a group of friends beyond the confines of acting, the director would sometimes tell the actors to cut, but have the cameras keep rolling. Many of these unscripted interactions of friends just being friends, including the dancing in the car scene, made the final cut. And it's great. That really is, like, just... Yeah, you really feel like they're they're friends, and and like I've watched a little bit of like behind the scenes, and like they did a they did a quiz on on YouTube, you know, or uh, I guess not a quiz, a challenge where they're like um, compliment challenge. I think you know it's easy to find. Yeah, they really did. They clearly like being around each other and and you know working together. Just as the film went into production, Nick Robinson, who plays Simon's younger brother, came out as gay. And this is actually the first film produced by a major Hollywood studio to feature a gay teenage protagonist. Now, got some critic quotes. So, uh, yeah, one says, The movie is sweet and disarming. And I absolutely agree. I, you know, it's, it's very difficult to not get wrapped, you know, not that I was really fighting it. Yeah, you really get wrapped up in in the the sweetness, and and some feel that it's it's too sweet and too bland, and I I get that. Uh, yeah, and the the reviewer goes on to say, I think it will help effective uh, effectively normalize being gay. Agreed, and that's great. Uh, yeah, one person points out the movie doesn't explore the gay people of color and goes out of its way to make Simon himself palatable to straight audiences. He's a white cis able-bodied allo romantic male. The only way he's different is gay, and he explicitly says, oh, I'm not that gay, which just, yeah, it's like they really are, like early in the movie, it goes out of its way to reassure the the straight, you know, not quite homophobic, but I don't know, audiences, audience members, no, no, no it's okay, it's okay. Um, look, he, you know, his parents are, you know, are, are straight, and they're, they're really happy together. Um, 
he has a he has a sister, and they they get along. Like, you know, if this wasn't like it's it's kind of ridiculous how like the the home life is basically ideal. Like the the bad thing is some you know what some would refer to as like some dad jokes and like the the kid sister is trying you know she's she like cooks for the family all the time and sometimes it's too spicy or something it's not always great you know it's just yeah it the, the movie could be so much more interesting if it allowed itself to dive more into minorities yeah let's see and yeah, so so one one reviewer gave a one out of ten. Says the film is a confused privilege mess. When setting up its premise, it immediately and explicitly undermines itself in the opening narration. Simon is a young white man with rich parents who are loving, attentive, and quite progressive. He goes to an affluent school with a diverse student body, several LGBT students. He's athletic, not at all an oddball or misfit. Let's see, and yeah, and then you know. Yes, I, and yet the central struggle is his being afraid to come out. This contradiction should give you a good sense of how the film conducts itself, as well as its estimation of the audience's intelligence. Simon's had, Simon has every type of an advantage, and his coming out has all the threat of lightly tossing a pillow from four inches up onto some larger, more fluffy pillows. I... Yeah, it's... I really wish that it did dare the the... To be more, yeah, and uh, yeah. Special shout out to the phrase "gay people are the only type of people that need to come out." I'm sure trans people really appreciated that one. Yeah, that was completely unnecessary of a just yeah, and and something that I really that really bothered me is the the bi erasure because like Simon spends a chunk of the film trying to figure out who is the the you know there's another gay boy at the school but that you know it, yeah and both of them are are still closeted you know that it, it's not a what's the word um yeah so you know but they they email each other and the the uh, simon tries to figure out which of the boys it is and there's a there's a I'm not going to give away who but at one point one of the people he thought it might be he he sees you know like kissing a girl and at that point he's basically completely convinced that must not be him which suggests that you know you're either gay or straight there's no you know bisexuality means being attracted to boys and girls and and yeah the the movie never i i would really have respected if it actually like went and said no 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 that's wrong but the movie never does confront that it you know yeah the the movie is made which, which, you know, cons despite the the book's author being bisexual, you know, so the the yeah, and and there's also there's this thing of considering that the movie is explicitly trying to improve how you know it it wants for gay people to be seen as you know, just as worthy, which they are, as straight people, there's a an early point where, like, Simon learns that, um, right, I haven't actually, you know, the, the, the alias, you know, from, for most of the movie, we don't know who, I'm, I'm not going to give away whether or not we ever find out, but for most of the movie, we don't know who the, the person he's emailing is, but, that person goes by blue and he you know blue says something about game of thrones and then simon is like oh i guess i gotta try to find a boy who's into game of thrones and then you have this sequence of him walking down the high school hallway 
and he sees guys with Game of Thrones t-shirts and he's like, oh, I don't want that one. And it's like, oh, that one's kind of tall. That one is a little, you know, not like super conventionally attractive. And it's just like, you don't need to throw people under the bus. You know, if you want to throw people under the bus for this, do it with homophobes. And it does do that a little bit. But like, I do, it's, it's really frustrating that it felt the need to, to say, you know, like, don't worry, gay people still get to be with someone conventionally attractive as if we shouldn't have way more respect and love for people who are not conventionally attractive. Now, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to real quick say so I I don't forget there's great chemistry between the the cast. Everyone is is well cast. Like I I knew a couple of these from other stuff and they just phenomenal. They they really yeah. And, and most of them were what I imagined when, when you know, listening to the audiobook. The, the, um, and it really captures a lot of the, the teenage experience, and I really appreciate, like, Simon is not the only one who can be awkward around people, or who's like, you know, sometimes feel like there's something missing because of not being out, you know, because of hiding the secret from everyone. You know, it it really does capture that uh, quite well, and the you know yeah, there are a number of times where like a teenager is trying to impress someone else and is struggling to come up with something clever to say, or they'll say something that is clever, and then like because of the underreaction, they'll like no. What I what I meant was you know this is you know which yeah, it's it's it really does capture. A, a lot of the... yeah. So, back to critic quotes. The word that best fits it as a comedy, a romance, and a coming-of-age story is innocuous. It's just that at this point in history, after Neil Patrick Harry's Glee... After Glee, innocuous doesn't feel like enough. The best thing Love, Simon did for LGBTQ media was pave the way for Love, Victor, its superior spin-off series, which... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I currently anticipate to do that next year for for uh, Pride. Let's see. N nevertheless, the latter wouldn't exist without the former, and for that I will always hold a soft spot in my heart for Berlanti's adaptation. <coughs> <coughs> love, Simon works because it feels like a love letter to a specific LGBT internet born of staying up late, sweaty, and paranoid on the family computer. It's fun to see Simon's inner thoughts play out as he tries to connect the dots with each guy. And I appreciate, like, in the, you know, in the audiobook, it's just the one person reading the, the entire thing, you know, and they'll do different voices somewhat. But in the movie, and also because it's, like, visual, you know, at first, when Simon has no idea who Blue is, we'll just see like a vague shot that you know you can't quite make out who it is and then once he's like oh maybe it's this guy then you know he pictures that guy you know and and the the actor is like speaking you know saying so it's not just like voiceover but is actually saying and we can see you know we get a sense ah oh, you know they're so in love kind of thing it's i i felt like that was a good you know it's obvious it's not breaking any new ground, but it was a good t tool. And let's see. The story of a teen figuring out his sexuality may provide familiarity, but director Greg Berlanti and screenwriters Isaac Aptaker and Elizabeth Berger do attempt to create something unique out of it by subverting cliches within the teen movie genre. On the one hand, this is a blandly suburban middle-class mainstream film, but on the other, it has made an effort to have a diverse cast. Of course, crucially, it is a major studio release tackling a young gay love story. It's also really enjoyable. This is a sweet and moving film that is built for all, but I'm guessing it will make a lot of gay teens see the world as a safer, more compassionate place for them. What really makes the film a feat of LGBTQ cinema is how ordinary it is. It's a love story between two men, Let's see, dude. seemingly quite radical for how sweet it is. And, right, and yeah, without tragedy and angst. 
It is a good romantic comedy, mainly achieved by having a protagonist one can easily connect with. Love, Simon is a movie every single parent should watch, and that goes double for the married ones, no matter how accepting you are. Simply a film that says that everyone, no matter who they are, deserves a love story. Let's see. And yeah, one, one person points out Simon barely ever gives his friends the chance to rally around him, instead tricking them into situations that benefit him. Overall, it's a sweet, likable comedy drama with lovable characters, a truthful and flawed script, a gay protagonist worth cheering for, and a huge stepping stone of inclusivity for the LGBT community on film. The first studio release, studio-wide release gay coming-of-age film tries so hard to get audiences to identify with the main character that he ends up being too ordinary. However, the characters around him are fully developed and help us grow to care about him. Absolutely agreed. Love, Simon insists on audiences dropping their preconceived notions of what love is and who it's meant for, reminding us all that being different isn't a bad thing. No matter how much mainstream Hollywood talks about inclusion, Love, Simon proves that its primary concern is the status quo. A hopeful and positive film like this, while playing safe on the surface, can act actually can do a whole lot of good, and for that, its importance is self-evident. This is cinema that people will owe their lives to. Rife with cliché, not exactly a bad thing considering the film uses the clichés to drive a more progressive point. The message is equality and acceptance when it comes through by refusing to conform to archaic standards of ideas of what a gay man should be. That's another thing I want to briefly say. You know, there's a kid in the in the same school as as Simon named Ethan, and he is out, you know, and, and gay, and they really made him very, very stereotypically gay, like, he's kind of effeminate, and, you know, the, the, I mean, it's not the worst, the following is not the worst stereotype, because I do appreciate when homophobes try to like insult him he fires back with material that is ten times a hundred times more of a burn and on more than one occasion you know onlookers are also like yeah you go Ethan so that that I, I do approve of but yeah let's see in a world of depression and negativity, this is a fun, optimistic, and positive film. An emotional feel-good movie with a solid message. Be who you are, love yourself. This movie is just as important as Black Panther or Wonder Woman, and that shows a true hero, the likes of which we don't see all that often on the big screen. Uh, love Simon takes this mission to a new neighborhood, aiming to occupy a space so long understood from both sides of the equation, to have no room for LGBTQ stories. I've heard this film described as a John Hughes type film, barely, though Hughes did spend a lot of time, his time writing about teenagers, their problems, how they dealt with them, his characters were a hell of a lot more believable. And they definitely, there's more depth to John Hughes' characters. Uh, you know, if you watch something like The Breakfast Club, like, there's a lot going on with those characters that you really, you know, you, you get to know them and really appreciate their depth over the course of the entire film and yeah this one is not as you know yeah Th this one is too scared to it's it's scared of of alienating the the a lot of the audience there's no questioning the sincerity or the worthy protonic sentiments of love simon but whoa does does this film brim, brim with bad direction okay that i'm not sure i that i, I don't really see that this movie is a straight man's gay film. Watching it felt like I was jumping through ho hoops of cliches and tropes designed to make straight people feel good about themselves for being allies. Let's see... Yeah, um... That actually... I'm gonna... real quick... That's a, that's a spoiler, but I want to talk about it. 
So I am going to put it in the spoiler section. There we go. Yeah, I, I would actually, I would go even further and say this is, this is a movie made for straight people who like, like to imagine that they're allies, but like, you know, they, they still like, if you say, if you say something to them that is like very obviously LGBTQ, they're gonna, you know, they might be able to repress it, but they're gonna feel like a, a ping of like, ah, oh, that's not, uh, that's not okay kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah. While I am a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I found Love, Simon to be one of the cheesiest, most cringeworthy films I have watched. Robinson adeptly manages to capture the anxiety of being a gay teenager with even more dexterity than Timothy Chalamet in Call Me By Your Name. It sticks to the rules of its genre, right down to, right down to the cloying music and uh, let's see, yeah, obligatory schmaltz. Using them to demonstrate truth that should be obvious, all love stories are essentially the same. It's highly unlikely you'll read a review of this that doesn't contain the word adorable. It's equally unlikely that you'll be able to watch it without grinning from ear to ear. A sweetly old-fashioned romance about a young man who falls in love over email with another young man. Tender, funny, sometimes heartbreaking, enormously human and honest. How heartening that a mainstream studio flick could have a gay protagonist. How disappointing that said flick, said flick is as twee and anodyne as this. While it is not a work that will change the world, Love, Simon is will indeed mean the world to any viewers living through the same trials, tribulations, and unnecessary solitary soul-searching as its teen protagonist. Love, Simon is up there with your first kiss or first pancake on a Saturday morning. It's not perfect, but it's still sweet as hell. As a piece of filmmaking craft, it's competent, if unremarkable. That's a really great way to put it. If Love, Simon helps even one gay teen come to terms with their sexuality in the friendly confines of familiar movie formulas, hey, it was probably worth it. It's a premise that understands the key takeaways of the closet, which is that sexuality is a valuable piece of intel. It's also a nice springboard for a few valuable life lessons about friendship and integrity and a handful of strong performances. Let's see, and I think yeah, so the the um hmm. actually i will get into that later here's a movie made for and about the people who believe they are the essence of american normalcy a movie that dutifully flatters and celebrates them even as it works to expand who that normalcy actually includes uh, innocuous but at this stage of cultural progress on the gay acceptance front that's not enough how do I put this? Love, Simon is an LGBT movie for straight people, just as Guess Who's Coming to Dinner is a POC film for white people. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice movie, the characters are fun and scenes will make you grin, but it's unrealistic in its depictions of coming out and the pressures that LGBT youth feel in academic scenarios. The film arises some controversy... I guess... yeah as anything would that deals with controversial subjects. While movies like Beautiful Thing and The Boys in the Band could pull off a controversial subject with grace, unlike movies with Ben and Arthur, and this to an extent don't really pull the point across without seeming pandering. There are aspects to this movie that are good, the humor is decent, the main character is a good actor, and his message is good for teens. The problem is pandering. He wants to jerk off gays by showing a reality that's skewed. Homophobia Homophobia isn't as common as the film wants to show. It's mostly people don't care. But it did seem to, to, to divert from the idea of more uh, advertise the idea of more than two genders, which I'm glad about. If you watch a movie about LGBT, then go watch the aforementioned movies that pulled off the concept well. But if you're looking for a laugh at humor to see some nice camera work or laugh at pandering, this is for you. And uh, yeah, so Simon doesn't know Blue, Blue does not know Simon. They email each other, get very personal, sometimes flirting. While obviously it's a different experience since I'm a partner straight, 
former partner. It is a truly romantic experience, and the, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, it's, it's too bad that people don't write each other as much anymore, because it really is, like, just, yeah, it can be a, an incredibly positive experience, and, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're in a situation where it makes any sense, you know, it's, yeah, it's a great way to, to get to know each other, and to just, yeah. Now, uh, let's see, and yeah, book and movie both underline the problems, frustrations, anxieties, and possible relief of coming out. What if I'm not accepted? What if people see me differently? My identity is tied to how others see me, and these sorts of things. Now, let's see, yeah, the movie handles plot twists pretty well. It's not really a movie that's like non-stop plot twists. And that brings us to the direction now. Greg Berlanti directed it and I'm not really familiar with the other stuff he's directed. It is cool that he's like, oh, he wrote the, the Green Lantern movie. Okay, so not the biggest fan of that script, but, you know, but yeah, he's right. He, he wrote for Dawson's Creek also, and Everwood, and various, yeah, some, some, like, comic book adaptation. Yeah. Now, that... Let's see. So yeah, the, the director is a gay man, and he's even married to another man, so that does really help with, you know, making sure that it's being made, but it was made by people who know, you know, it would, it would be great if it was like Fire Island or Crush and, and had even more, you know, but yeah, it's, it's not nothing. Now, I'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad. The ending does fit with what came before. I like the ending okay. And, you know, some, some critics absolutely hated the ending, which I can understand. Now, right, so... The... the Yeah, it's a, it's a very good adaptation, you know, the, the, it's clearly, like, the, the two writers of the movie clearly understood what the, like, they understood why the book works so well. And I, I suppose I would say if you're only going to do one, I would recommend the book over the movie. Now, let's see, so, so yes, uh, that brings us to the characters. Nick Robinson plays Simon Spear, and the, the, he does a, a good job, you know, you, you, like, he's, he's convincing in the varied situations we see him in. You know, it's very different whether he's with his family, his friends, by himself, with someone he thinks might be blue, you know. Josh um, DeHamel, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, as Jack Spear, Simon's father, who, like, they have him make a few, like, they're not, like, the most aggressively homophobic, I suppose... I don't know, I feel like they, they go past microaggressions, but yeah, you know. And the thing is, like, he'll he'll kind of frame them as dad jokes. So I, I do appreciate that the movie acknowledges that he shouldn't be making those comments. It's not just saying, oh, you know, dad jokes, not everybody likes them. No, homophobia, not okay. I, I don't think I've seen him in anything else. I, I know that he's in some of the Transformers movies, 
but no, he does a, a good job. He like he feels like this kind of you know middle class dad type. You know, he's he's not amazing at like technology, so like Simon pitches in there and you know he's it's it's this thing where Yeah, basically like he he will be like super direct sometimes about like sexuality and such to to the point where you know because like he's trying to to <laughs> he's trying to project acceptance and openness, but you know maybe he goes a little too far sometimes. And Jennifer Garner plays Emily Spear, Simon's mother. Longtime fan of hers. This is one of the only movies I've watched where she's someone's mother. You know, I, I was I'm I, I love her in alias and you know she's good in Electra, Daredevil and such. I don't think it was her fault that Peppermint didn't work. You know, it's it's um yeah, this is one of the only movies I've seen where she's the mom and you know, I I always wish there was more of her in in stuff like this, but no, she is. That that's also like, you know, she's she's smart and charming, and and also like really tries to be. You know, she yeah, she the character is progressive, and she's trying to to make sure that that Simon and his younger sister Nora you know, both feel like, you know, no, you can you can talk to me kind of thing. Catherine Langford plays Leah Le Leah Burke, one of Simon's best friends. And yeah, I'm not I don't have a ton to say about her specifically. Alexandra Ship plays Abby Suso, one of Simon's best friends. I really love her a storm. It was very cool to see her in this, and I appreciate that she has now donned the costume of more than one superhero. That's very cool. You know, she she joins a very a, a short but gradually expanding, very privileged few who, you know, so so yeah, that's that's really cool and. Let's see, yeah, and Jorge Lindeberg Jr. plays Nick Eisner, one of Simon's best friends. He was great in MCU Spider-Man, and something I really appreciate, like, there's this thing about how Abby is new to the friend group. She's only been there for six months. The other three, you know, they've known each other since kindergarten, and it's not, like, she's accepted. She's a part of the friend group. You know, six months, that's a, that's enough time to become like part of a friend group but every so often there just be a little thing where someone says something or does something and it's like oh right because so it's, uh, yeah and let's see Kanan Lonsdale plays Abraham Greenfield he's quite good Miles Heiser as Cal Price one of Simon's classmates Logan Miller plays Martin Addison, one of Simon's classmates. Tony Hale plays Mr. Worth, the awkward vice principal of the school Simon attends. And I, I appreciate, like, they did a, a good job with, like, he's constantly trying to be hip and down with the kids. You know, like, he's, he's re fairly responsible. He's, he's doing what he, you know... He's doing what he what he has to, you know. If if you text in in the hallway, he's gonna take your phone. You can get it back later in the day, you know. The the which you know I don't know that I agree with that kind of rule, but I I feel like American schools go way too far with with rules and regulations anyway. But yeah, you know, it's a rule at that school, many others in America, and you know, his, but but he won't be like. Excuse me, are you texting in the... I'll just take that. You know, no, he's like, oh, someone's texting in the hallway. Oh, you can have it back when you come see me later. You know, kind of just really trying so hard to, to relate to them. And, like, nobody's buying it. And it's, yeah, it's, 
it's pretty funny, and it is also a little, like, I don't know if it's charming, he's kind of adorkable, you know, it's just, he's, he's, he really does want to, you know, and you, and you get the sense that it's not like an act, no, he really does, you know, he cares about these teenagers, he wants them to, you know, there's this, there's a, there's a sign in his office that says, open door, open ears, you know, and he apparently makes them, you know, like, at one point, he's like, ah, what's my, what's my motto, and, you know, the, it's right there, and, the student begrudgingly goes, open door, open ears, open door, open ears, that's it exactly, you know, kind of just, he really does want, because, like, you get the sense that he knows that for a teenager, a vice principal is, like, just, you know, you can't even imagine the, the you know, you, you couldn't possibly have anything in common kind of thing. So, he's he's overcompensating, and... Yeah, it's, yeah, and, and it is legitimately funny, like, just the, yeah, and Talitha Bateman plays Nora Spear, Simon's sister, right, I guess I should also mention, um, yeah, so Bryson Pitts plays Simon at 10, Nye Reynolds plays Simon at 5, Sky Mowbray plays Nora at 6. And they also do great. And they, they did a good job finding, like, they, they all look like it's the same person, just years apart. And Natasha Rothwell plays Mrs. Miss, sorry, Miss. Yeah, I think it's Miss Albright, Simon's drama teacher. She was an extra in The Lion King. She, you know, how has she fallen this far? She's... Because there's some very, very frustrating things when it comes to the the drama. And I, I appreciate the, the drama class. And I appreciate, like, I, I've i never been in drama class myself, but I do hear that, like, you know, at the start, it's a mess. Like, the, the various, you know, yeah, like, they're just, they're not, they don't quite have it yet. And, you know, she's tr she tries to, to tell them, it's, you know, it's, it, it could be worse kind of thing, you know, but, yeah, and, yeah, we'll, we'll see them improve over the, the course of it. Drew Starkey plays Garrett Laughlin, one of Simon's classmates. Clark Moore plays Ethan, one of si Simon's classmates who's openly gay. Joey Polari plays Lyle. Who is a server at the local at a local diner? Mackenzie Lintz plays Taylor Metternich, one of Simon's classmates, and they do all do a really good job. Like everyone really delivers what is required. You know, there's several that it's like, okay, this, you know, no, it's it's not necessarily fun to act like this, but you're gonna have to be really, really awkward and do something that's going to make the audience cringe and, you know, just kind of, yeah. And there is one character who does something really bad and I... They give him, they give that, yeah, they give him some other negative traits, but the... I felt like they they were trying too hard to make sure that the audience wouldn't like the character. You know, they were a little worried that if he did at least one really bad thing, but he was otherwise like really charming and and you know that a lot of people would watch it and and find themselves liking him. So they pushed really hard and it's just like he, you know, he's one of the most awkward in the movie, and it's just, like, there's plenty of people who are awkward in high school who wouldn't do the really bad thing that he does. I think I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it at the very start of the spoiler section, but I don't think I want to get into it before then. Now, the, the dialogue really captures how people talk. There are 19 entries in the IMDb quote section. All of them are good. 
the cinematography is really really good now it was handled by John Gulasarian I'm gonna go ahead and Gulasarian I guess is how you pronounce it 41 completed credits three upcoming and among them you know this guy shot Candyman so this is not quite as well shot as Candyman, but it also doesn't quite close. I don't think that was his, you know, it was, like, the studio was scared that it it couldn't get too, like, wild. Like, Candyman is one of the best shot films in a long time. Uh, you know, so so that's not... But, but yeah, he did... Yeah, and he's, yeah, he's shot other love stories, and that really shows. Like, he gets how... You know, because, like, when, when it's, like, essentially a POV, yeah, because, yeah, he, he shot About Time, and, uh, I don't know this one, but it's called Kiss Me, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's a love thing, but, yeah, you know, there's, there's these shots that are, like, basically Simon imagining his, you know, the, the guy that he's in love with being you know the sitting there typing this email to him and just the way it's shot and the the lighting and the filters is just pitch perfect like you really it's it's the you know when you close your eyes and imagine someone you're in love with that's what it looks like and yeah you know some some cinematographers are too married to the idea that it has to look real and just if you make it clear to the audience this is not quite real this is what someone is imagining you can go Buckwild, and this doesn't quite go Buckwild, but it takes a few baby steps in that direction, and it is much appreciated. And yeah, there's uh, there you know some of the some of the time when when like some characters do some awkward things, and and you maybe like cringe. That's also filmed in a way that is like very distinctly like yeah you it it really works for that and the editing great to see that the reaction shot is still being used i know i i say it i've been saying that a lot recently but yeah they they do some really great stuff with with reaction shots here and you know, it's it's that thing of, like, teenage awkwardness in front of people, just, yeah. And, yeah, the editing, like, no scene just, like, lasts for way too, well, maybe some of the stuff near the end, but, lasts long, but, too long, but it is, it's supposed to, you know, you're supposed to feel the thing it's making you feel, you know, but, but, yeah. And I've seen some people say that it's, like, kind of slow-paced. I don't really agree, but I don't know. Let's see. So that brings us... Oh, right, and the editing was handled by Harry Jean, who has edited 23. And he's edited... He's also edited some superhero stuff. Battlestar Galactica, very cool. Yeah, you know, really, really great job. Now, the that that's right. The this was uh just, oh here we go yes so this was made on a budget of seventeen million and the see, yeah so the yeah the the U.S. gross was 40 mil, the worldwide was 66 million, so, yeah, and that is, that is definitely part of why it plays it so safe, they wanted to make their money back, kind of, yeah, and, right, that brings us to the music by Rob Simonson, who has composed for 70 movies, including The Whale. So yeah, incredibly talented. And the, the 
yeah, the like the music really captures the the mood. It really, you know, it's it's like this thing of like teenage emotions and the the kind of yeah, and and the the this kind of safe suburban experience also. Now, the movie is one hour and 46 minutes without end credits and 49 with them. And that... Yeah. So the, the best elements, you know, it's great to see a coming out story from a major studio. I, I really appreciated how well it captured, like, teenage awkwardness. The, the, yeah, it is, it is funny, sweet, romantic. The worst aspect is definitely that there is, it just, it's, it's, it's much too safe. And, uh, yeah, that's also a very common complaint about, you know, it's it's too heteronormative, Simon is too privileged, and the movie is, he and the movie are scared of being too gay. And I do think that is an issue. It's, it's very much, it's a movie for a very certain audience. I do think, you know, well, I don't even have to, to guess, because I've seen some reviews that said, this gave me the courage to come out, you know, and that's wonderful. Uh, you know, but it is like, you know, a movie like Crush is some, I, I would definitely say, if you're, if you're only going to watch one of these two movies, you know, but you want, you know, once again, the, let's see, have it, yes. Like Crush, you know, a lot about it is like the cishet teen coming of age rom com, but Crush, you know, has a bunch of characters who are out from the very start, including the lead. It's not about coming out, which, to be fair, I'm not saying coming out is absolutely an important par part of the LGBTQ experience. So I'm not saying that it's not important to do movies about that. I'm saying I wish this movie handled that better, and because it doesn't, I would recommend Crush. Which, just you know, like at the start of that, the the lead, you know, a a young a, a sapphic teen girl, she's like, she can basically pick and choose what lesbian to to pursue in in her high school. You know, no one's like she's there. There, she and her friends are walking through the, the halls, uh, hallways of, of high school. And it's like, so there's there's that one, there's that one, which which would you like, you know, they're not afraid of being overheard kind of thing. And yeah, you know, if we're talking about like trying to provide a safe space, trying to say it's okay kind of thing, you know, like that movie starts after the coming out has, has happened and says, once you've come out, this is how wonderful it could be kind of thing, where this movie spends the entire time, you know, it is... I can imagine for for many people this will be the one if they watch both movies this is the one more likely to encourage them to come out and let's see so the yeah the trailer does give at least a little too much away um, but it is also it does give you a good idea of what the movie is like and the cover and poster do not give too much away. It gives as good of an idea as that poster, to, you know, yeah, this is not a super easy movie to make a poster for. That brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where this has a 92%, so it's certified fresh, 92%, 241 critic reviews, only 20 Rotten and I can imagine I'm gonna do a very very quick skim yeah D you know there's some about how stereotypical it is and the, yeah this is where the you have the one with John Hughes 
characters being much more deep. They say it's bland. And yeah, it's just the, the kinds of yeah, this is also where you have the guy who said, innocuous at this stage of cultural progress on the gay acceptance front, front that's not enough. But yeah, um, let's see. The, yeah, and the, and the user score is 87% based on over 5,000 ratings. The average rating is 4.3 out of 5. And the consensus, Love, Simon hits its coming-of-age beats more deftly than any entries in this well-traveled genre and represents an overdue, if not entirely successful, milestone of inclusion. And that brings us to Metacritic, where it has a 72 out of 100 from critics, 31 positive, 7 mixed. And let's see. Yeah, and the mixed are also these kinds of things that the that the rotten rotten tomatoes one said. The user score is eight point one, based on three hundred twenty three ratings, two hundred seventy positive, thirty one mixed, twenty two negative, and. Yeah, this is where you have the 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 one who said it's a confused privileged mess. Let's see. One person really didn't like the script. And yeah. Now on IMDB it has um there it is. There are 600 reviews, or 497 if you hide spoilers. I read the top voted 100 of the 497 that don't have spoilers. There, th yeah, based on 120,000 ratings, the overall rating is 7.5. And yeah, a, l a lot of people just felt like, you know, for a lot of people that just worked, they didn't necessarily think about how much better it could have been. 26.2% gave it an 8, 23.6 gave it a 7, 18.3 gave it a 10, 13.7 gave it a 9, 9.8 gave it a 6, 3.6 gave it a 5, 2.2 gave it 1. And you know that's probably a mix of the people who f who wish it was it didn't play it so safe and some people who just no matter what they're gonna be homophobic and not give a movie a chance. Now, yeah, so 1.4% gave it 4, 0 0.8 gave it 3, 0 0.5 gave it 2. And, right, of the, of the top 100 spoiler-free user reviews, 3 rated it 1, 1 rated it 2, 2 rated it 3, nobody rated it 4, 4 rated it 5, 12 rated 6, 19 gave it 7, 18 gave it 8, 15 gave it 9, 31 gave it 10. So yeah, very positively received. And it won 9 awards and was nominated for 28 and did not know that. There, yeah, I am... Um, There's a, there's, there's, they give awards specifically for LGBTQ um, stuff now, and it's, uh, it's the Q word, which I'm not comfortable with saying, so yeah, Q word, and then T's, like T-I-E-S, that's great, and yeah, the Live In My Truth on-screen romance award, and Blockbuster. And yeah, the the yeah, it actually got for for yeah, the the glad I those I didn't know about. I didn't know there was also the other one. Anyway, 
yeah, um, but th yeah, Jennifer Garner got for Best Supporting Actress, and she absolutely she did an amazing job, and it got for location casting and yeah just various it really it it spans the entire every, every nearly every element of the the film of of like the um technical aspects were at least nominated now that brings us to the yeah so in the in the description box there will be a couple of links to stuff that's like specifically about this and then stuff that's you know just various LGBTQ YouTube videos that I think are worth watching and yeah, uh, I rate this 17 coming out stories out of 10, and I'll probably watch it at least once more. It might be at least weeks before I do, and yeah, it, it definitely is a movie that, you know, it's fine for now. I, I hope that in the future we'll have so much mainstream acceptance of LGBTQ that this will be just like it'll be thought of as as just you know uh, yeah I guess we had to get that out of the way now we can be so much more progressive you know and that is the like the fact that Crush I mean I realized that was streaming this went to theaters so it's not 100% the same but the fact that Crush came out just four years after this and is so much more daring I yeah it's it's something I definitely think yeah but that's it for the review itself so if from here on there be spoilers I will give away absolutely everything so yeah now yes starting with notes taken while watching so I'm gonna start this by saying something that you know it's a major part of the plot and it's definitely some people are not gonna want to watch this knowing this so Martin blackmails Simon uh, threatening to make public the the emails where Simon and Blue talk about being gay and I was you know I appreciate that the movie you know in the in the book that's literally the opening which is of course you know if you if you've got a movie you know as long as it's good enough people are gonna sit you know you but a book for teenagers, you know, it's YA, so you gotta grab them from right away. And it literally opens with, you know, Effin Martin coming up to, to Simon and revealing that he saw the, the email. And in the movie, it's like 26 minutes in or so. So, yeah. But I think, I think this change makes a lot of sense. I think, you know... It's, you know, that's not when we find out that Simon is gay or that he's keeping it secret. It's just when the, the, when it's threatened. And I think it makes sense for a movie to make sure to set up, of, you know, we, we meet all of the major characters and, and the, yeah, so, so, yeah, really appreciate that. And, uh, one one brief I'll just say I I really like the flirting about grammatical in in the in the book emails and the thing about you shouldn't be thinking about uh, you know being with someone like that you should be thinking is it 
I think actually, yeah, I think the quote is, you shouldn't be thinking about having sex with someone like that. You should be thinking about having sex with someone who's cute and grammatical and, and just... Yeah, just they're they're so adorable. You really root for them as a couple, and it's just yeah. And and I do think they they do a great job in the in the movie as well. Uh, you know, I I really appreciated that they confront th right uh, for once. These are completely out of chronological order, but yeah, I really appreciated that the you know in in the book Simon drunkenly confronts his father and says you know, you, you made all those gay jokes, kind of thing, and in the movie, it's his father coming in and saying, you know, I'm so sorry about those jokes, and I, I should have known, I should have known that you were gay, you know, and this thing, and I think both work well for their medium. I, I, I think the scene would have been, it, it wouldn't have fit with the rest of the movie if it played out the way it did in the in the book did really not like I, I did already mention in the in the review, but I really the the fact that like Simon thinks that Bram can't be blue because he catches him making out with a girl, and then later he says you know, to to the point you know, he's so certain that when Bram walks up to the, the Ferris wheel, you know, it's not that he doesn't like the idea of it being Bram, but it's the you know he's so convinced that it can't be Bram so he's like I'm I I was waiting for someone and then Bram says I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da, and you know assures him no I was I was drunk and confused it ended right after you saw you know, and it's just like is is that like the, so a lot of you know straight homophobes have like no homo I guess some you know this this movie has like no bi. It's just, I really wish that they had just had it be, you know, I, I'm by, you know, in instead of this this thing of just yeah, not that you know, there's obviously there's nothing wrong with someone experimenting with their sexuality and considering that maybe you know, so but but just the, yeah, I I think maybe the reason why. Bram couldn't be by is that a lot of people, apparently including some in the LGBTQ community, think that by means that you're promiscuous and like you you can't be monogamous kind of thing, and it's just that's not true, you know. So so just yeah, but the yeah I I thought that the the narration worked well I, I you know it's it's not the first movie to do this thing of you know it's narration because it's literally something that the character is also writing in, in some form you know sometimes it's a book they're writing here it's emails I thought it worked you know and and actually the fact that like at the very start it's just I'm just like you kind of thing, you know, and then, like, 20 minutes in or so, he's writing the email, and then we see, oh, what we heard, that's what he wrote to Blue. I'm just like you, because he knows that Blue is closeted gay, and, and yeah, you know, that that was a, a decent, and I, I do also appreciate, you know, I, I mentioned that I prefer the book title, but Love, Simon is the the thing that he writes in the the public message where he comes out, you know, near the end of, of the movie. And that was, you know, yeah. That's a good place to get the title from also because, like, for a chunk of the movie, you're not quite sure what it... Because, like, even when he writes, I, when he writes love, he writes love Jacques. You know, and that was also a great, like, you know, he's, he's drunk and it's late. He's uh, sent... Oh my god, oh my god, I wrote love, Jacques, which, you know, it's that thing, you know, there's a, there's a Danish saying, I f I'm not 100% certain, there's an, I, I, there, there's probably an English language equivalent, but anyway, a Danish saying, don't worry, I'm not going to say it in Danish, that translates to English as what the heart is full of comes out the mouth, you know, if you, if you feel something for a really long time, really strongly, you know, it'll, it'll, 
come out. And sometimes that means love, sometimes it means big, bigotry and that kind of thing. But anyway, you know, that's that's how it happened. And Blue responds with love also, and that's so sweet. Just, yeah. The, the... Um, I thought they did a decent job making a uh, making it seem like it might be Lyle, you know, the flirting, remembering Simon, and you know he was he was on his phone, and then Simon receives an email, and it's like that was him emailing me just now, you know, kind of thing. That yeah, and obviously Martin's big, you know, big gesture is is really really cringy and, and awkward and such, you know, I appreciate that, that Abby tries to let him down easy, and it's that, it's, you know, it's a, it's stereotypical, but it happens. A lot of guys mistake, you know, when, when a girl is, like, just interested in being friends, you know, a lot of guys think, well, if she, if she smiles at me, that means she wants us to be a couple. And it's just, it's not like that, you know, and, and it is, I, I, you know, the movie doesn't show her, you know, early on, she's, she really struggles to warm up to him, but later, you know, she, she's laughing at his terrible jokes and, and such, and, you know, yeah, the, the ultimately, she doesn't say or do anything with him that, means that it can't possibly be true that she's not in love with him, that that she only wants to be friends. You know, a, a lot of straight girls laugh with their straight male friends doesn't mean that they want a relationship, a, a romantic relationship. I absolutely loved Jennifer Garner's, the, the exhale speech, which, you know, it's it's not really the the um, uh, oh wrong part of my notes hold on there we go the the yeah the exhale speech obviously amazing and uh, right and and the originally according to IMDb trivia it wasn't originally in the script there were just a few parent scenes when Jennifer Garner became interested in the role of Emily she asked director Drake, Greg Berlanti for a scene that has her actually connect with Simon, so they built it again, wrote what would have, what would become essentially the message of the film, and just, yeah, it's, it's, they, just so good, so, so amazing. Let's see that, um... Yeah, so the, the very ending with him sitting on the Ferris wheel for a really long time, you know, it's 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 very very t t typical romantic comedy ending kind of thing with you know, <gasps> and then finally the the big you know and and it has to be a big gesture you know it's not enough for the the two gay boys to to be together it has to be you know in front of everyone and I will say it's a wonderful message it's I I really do hope that like. You know, I think to a, the, a a certain chunk of the 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 movie is basically for just like straight people to show them like gay people aren't like dangerous and they're not gonna like you know you can you can be supportive just by accepting them you know kind of thing and I think that is basically um. Yeah. So I, yeah, in the in the review, I'm I hinted at. You know, I guess I'll I'll go ahead and really get into detail. So you know, Martin blackmails, and I acknowledge some of this is also in the book. But yeah, Martin blackmails Simon, which you know, right right there, that should be it. We should, you know, there shouldn't be any chance of us liking him. But then they also have to make him the most awkward of the teen characters. You know, he's really struggling with the, you know, and just, yeah, and especially, because, yeah, and in the movie, like, ah, I have to, I, I don't remember everything about the book. I kind of got the sense that in the book, 
he basically, he almost never really got to be near her. Where in the movie, they are already, like, eating together. It's just not, you know, they're, they're eating in the, in the school cafeteria together. They're just not hanging out outside of school kind of thing. Yeah. In the, in the book, the Freudian slip is being worn by one of the, the girls at the uh, party. And Simon says that's actually a, a clever joke and is, you know, and I, of course, they, they wanted to have the Freudian slip in there because it is legitimately a funny joke. So they turned it into a bad joke. They, they put a male character we're not supposed to like in a dress and then we have the, the thing of, you know, they even, <clears throat> uh, what, what? Uh, I think it's, it's Simon who, who even, like, compared, you know, says you look like a drag queen that rolled on, you know, that, that it rolled around in fridge magnets, which, you know, the fridge magnet thing is, is definitely an, an accurate, but, you know, don't, don't use, like, drag as a, as a bad thing. And I realize, you know, in 2018, it wasn't, you know, right now, they're, they're claiming that drag queens are grooming children. So it's a, it's, it's something in them, it, that has aged extraordinarily terribly. It has aged like fine banana. I realize they didn't know that was going to happen, but don't, just, it, it's, again, it's this thing of, you know, don't, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, okay, he's he's gay, but he doesn't like he doesn't like drag, you know. He's he's gonna make jokes about drag, drag queens, and just yeah. I think that is everything. I I have to admit I don't. Okay, yeah. If I if I recall in the in the book, basically Martin was angry. Not because of like a big romantic gesture failing, but just because he like he saw Abby like with you know really yeah with with another guy, and that was the thing that you know so i I think it works fine in the book i I think it was smart to to for the movie change it into a, a failing big romantic gesture and he's being cyberbully basically which you know he de he deserves that for blackmail but he doesn't deserve it for a failed romantic gesture and it's it's you know i i believed that martin would reveal you know in in the in the book as well but for a movie i feel like it it works better that there was this really big thing that uh, you know and it, it, the thing with big romantic gestures it it really sucks because some some straight women love them and uh, other straight women hate them and you know us straight young men we're told if she doesn't love it that means she's not right for you and that's not true you know but big romantic gestures work in movies because you got you know it's it works well for a movie to end in something big so you know it's actually there there are some people who've had really negative experiences you know on either 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 delivering or receiving a big romantic gesture and it's you know so if this movie can help clarify that you do need to be you know not not everybody loves big romantic gesture gestures you know that would be good. Um, I appreciated the use of reaction shots during the the big romantic gesture. You know, the the um, even the vice principal was was cringing. Like he he pulls the 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 hat down to cover his face because he can't stand how how awkward it is, kind of thing. You know. Um, I have to admit I was surprised that the you know when when Martin said, I'm not going to stop asking until you say, I deserve a goddamn superhero, you know. Yeah, I, I really thought that was going to completely destroy any chance of, of a positive relationship between the two of them, but she does end up actually liking, you know, so, so yeah. 
yeah, I that is that is it for this section, which brings us to the final section, notes taken before watching. So, got some critic quotes. As a gay man watching this, this movie is wrong in so many ways. Gay men don't anyhow become attracted to any gay man that is that possibly is blue. Is to become lovers. The whole story of coming out is fake and bubblegumish. Just because he wrote a message about him being a gay man deserves to love, suddenly he is the hero of the whole school. Trust me, if someone does it in real life, they... Let's see. Um... Does it in real life they get praised and get slammed by public? That's how real life is towards gay men. And some of the other stuff, this m movie must be written by a heterosexual thinking how cool it would be to do a gay movie. And that's, yeah. But, um, yeah, this, this one, this is really sweet. So, one user reviewer wrote, in all caps, I love this movie. And then out of caps, it was so cute and adorable about coming out and everything. I am bisexual. Do I understand wanting to keep, I, I guess though, I understand wanting to keep a secret. I also came out to my mother and I have full support of my decision, LGBTQ plus forever. And then, right, and, and for forever is cap, capitalized. And then they put, I guess, basically every colored heart that, so there's a, a is a black heart a sign of love? I, I guess here it is. An orange heart, yellow, green, blue, purple red purple and blue maybe imitating the the pride flag with the the clip but but yeah you know wonderful i'm so glad that just yeah and one gave it a nine and wrote well obviously a little far from reality there are so many movies that are far from reality so many straight romance movies have happy endings why not a gay movie too exactly only sore thing this movie has is that whole blackmail thing. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that it doesn't really, like, say that what Martin did was okay or, or any, you know. And it's, it works as a hook, you know. And, and you know, sadly, it, it has happened in, in real life and did not go anywhere near as, as well. Now, um, yeah, one person gave it a 10 out of 10. Best movie I've ever watched. First off, let, let me start off by saying I cried for almost half of this movie. This is what gave me the courage to come out. I did it the day after, and I thank the creators. Perfect and beautiful movie. Just wonderful to, to yeah. Um, and this person gave it a 9 out of 10, if only. Soppy and cliche as hell, absolutely, but some amazing line that, lines that really got how it was growing up in similar circumstances. The exhale part, wow. All I can say is I just wish movie producers had the guts to make this 20 years ago. Probably would have saved me a lot of heartache, suicidal thoughts, many dark thoughts, and a chunk of my life. And let's see... Uh, yeah, and this person gave it a 1 out of 10. Totally predictable and completely ridiculous. Martin is a jerk. He should be in jail. Yeah. And, yeah, this person really didn't... It, not only does he ruin Simon's life, he also ruins the surprise 30 minutes into the film. What do you get when you mix black and Jewish, bluish? Oh, wow, way to ruin the whole film. This movie is boring and quite insulting, actually. Coming from a gay guy who was also tormented as a teen by being outed online in the late 1990s, let me tell you, it wasn't this lovely even in the liberal Seattle area. Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and one wrote, P.S. where it failed big time was the musical fantasy sequence where Simon is leading a big number about what it means to be gay. I found that offensive to the max, and not just because Mr. Robinson is not a great mover. I guess that's instead of calling him a dancer, because he doesn't really dance in the scene, he's just walking. But anyway, yeah. I I really it's it's a very frustrating sequence. Let's see. You know, it's it's not that there's anything wrong with doing those things, if that's what you want to do, but the movie is saying the movie's basically making fun of gay people, saying, you know, if you're the the gayer you are, which, you know, I mean, I just, see, the thing is, 
you could easily you could have made a joke you could just just reverse it you know just say you know well what about people who are too straight like um Jamie Dodger if you're on YouTube you know did a video where he went over like I, th I think it's called the straights are never okay or something like that you know and it's basically like this this subreddit where you know he's he's going through the subreddit and and there's these things that like people who are homophobic and transphobic say and do you know often to to make sure that people you know to to make it completely clear i'm i'm straight uh i'm i'm straight and i'm cis and there's nothing you know just and it's you know and one of them is like a guy getting insulted by like he he goes to to buy a coffee and the the barista's like so you know hot or iced um do i look like a woman no i'm a straight man hot coffee obviously and it's just like make fun of that don't say oh don't be this gay say don't be this straight you know that that kind of thing you know there's a there's um I heard about some people who don't think that it's okay for straight men to drink Sprite. That like that'll turn you gay. Uh, I remember when I was a teenager, there was some of some of the boys my age were like, if you you know, real men don't sit with their legs crossed. That's a woman thing, you know. And and I think the idea was, you know, you you know, like smushing your junk, you know if you if you cross your legs too much or something but it's just it's the most ridiculous and and then you you know every everyone who had heard that then was like every time they sat down they had to worry about wait am i sitting right you know it's just completely ridiculous things you know i i wish i think the movie could have just done that in instead you know have the have a you know, similar length sequence, and just have a bunch of things that are thought of as, like, you know, that's the kind of stuff that people do if they're terrified someone will think that there's... Actually, yeah, you could, you could even have that be. You could have it be that, like, Simon was thinking, you know, oh, currently I have to do this, and then have a sequence of him doing a bunch of things that you know it's it's just there to to make sure people know that he's definitely not gay kind of thing you know and let's see so yeah back to the critic quotes i did have fun with this movie but i couldn't get i couldn't help but get that yeah sure buddy feeling when every homophobe at the school became an ally a moment after simon made a hard felt tumblr post yeah this film is said to be the first film by a major Hollywood studio to focus on a gay teenage romance, but I have to say that Love, Simon is not a gay romance. It is a film of self-struggle, standing up for yourself. There's no romance between gay people in the film. I mean, this is not the purpose of Love, Simon to be understood as production about gay people, because it is not. 100%. You're entitled to your opinion, but I gotta say, the, the correspondence is deeply romantic, and I, I think it's important to remember love in person is not the only type of romantic love. Like, you know, the book dives deeper into it, but, like, the, the, um, yeah, it's, I, I would definitely say that it is, and, you know, I would have to guess that the person who wrote what I just quoted maybe hasn't had that experience, only, you know, knows of, of like, in-person kind of stuff, you know, and it's, yeah. Um, I've, I've talked about this before, um, my first girlfriend, you know, she and I wrote together, we, we started out just writing as friends, we, we were talking about movies, you know, writing about movies we liked and such, and, yeah, over the course of, of, you know, it, it didn't happen right away, but it happened, we, we fell in love, and, you know, we're not together anymore, you know, any, yeah, but, the the you know it's the kind of thing like both of us could be kind of awkward around people we don't know very well in in real life so the writing was actually probably the only way that we would ever have had a relationship you know so i i think it's it's very important to to 
keep in mind. And there is, I don't know, there is something about being in love with someone and not yet knowing exactly what they look like. You know, like, both of us knew the, you know, I knew she was a woman, she knew I was a man. We both knew that the other was straight, you know, so the, the, yeah, you know, but, yeah, after that, like, it, there was a while where we didn't know what the other looked like, and then, you know, like, yeah, once once we met in person, it was basically like, well, yeah, she knew what I looked like, but I hadn't seen, a, you know, I hadn't seen a picture of her, but I had enough, you know, I, it was clear that I wasn't being, like, catfished or something, but anyway, the, the yeah, you know, once... Once we met in person, it wasn't like I had to fall in love all over again. Like we had to, we had to adjust to being in person, of course. But it was just, you know, putting a face to the person I loved. So, yeah. Now let's see. Uh, but but yeah, this person does say, you know, it's a very useful movie in the means of creating public awareness. I had a lot of fun watching it. And one person gave it a 6 out of 10. Simon is a competent rom-com. Love, Simon is a competent rom-com, but a woeful gay coming-out dramedy. As one earlier comment wrote, the story lacks the sensitivity and care that would have been evident had it been written and produced by gay people. There's probably no event more momentous and potentially traumatic for an LGBTQ individual than coming out to their friends, family, and community. Instead of a respectful movie about this difficult process, Love, Simon weaves it into an improbable fantasy high school drama. However, it is not without its merits. As a gay man of color, I, I'm used to not not only seeing heteronormativity play out in most of TV and film, but also the underrepresentation of people in co of color in LGBTQ TV and film. Straight people, straight TV and film are actually better at racial diversity than LGBTQ ones. I have to admit, I didn't actually realize that until I read this review. Recent examples such as It's a Sin, Heartstopper, Uncoupled, and Bros only portray, portray only white protagonists. Another comment below described how disappointed he was when Simon did not end up with a white guy while well, claiming that he's not being racist. Wow, that really is... Holy crap. For me, Love, Simon redeems itself by not going with the obvious. And, yeah, so I quoted some of this review earlier in, the, in, in my review itself. So now I'll get into the spoilers of it. This movie is a straight man's gay film. Watching it felt like it was jumping through ho hoops of cliches and tr tropes designed to make straight people feel good about themselves for being allies. My point is proven in the relationship and interactions between Simon and Leah, al Leah alone. The I have a crush on you and you're gay so you lied to me plot is so incredibly toxic and harmful and the fact it goes mostly unaddressed in this film is ridiculous. Absolutely agreed. I, what were they doing with that? It's just so... Yeah. I... I um, yeah. Now... In, in both trailers, there's, you know, you see Simon trying to compliment a guy blowing leaves about his boots. I gotta say, I it just, for me, it just doesn't work at all. In in either trailer or in the film, it, I, I don't know what they were doing with that. It just, it didn't work at, at all. Now, the, um, let's see, I think that was everything yeah just a couple more you know i i liked when the you know abby goes to the the you know first of all nick how do you not recognize yoko ono and you know john lennon that's you know but then i guess he he Maybe he thought that they were going to put as little effort into the costume as he did, but... Now, overall, Nick is a great character, but, but yeah, you know, it was... Nick Robinson does a pretty passable John Lennon, yeah, accent, you know, and Abby shows up as Wonder Woman and says, Wonder Woman is in the hizzy, and then she explains, you know, she doesn't have a catchphrase, you know, so I had to make one up. Hizzy means house. It's just like, you know, just, yeah. 
because because you know they didn't really react the way you know she was expecting like hey like or woo you know so cool kind of thing you know just yeah and let's see um i did feel really bad for nora when simon like yells at her and and she cries and, and runs out you know when 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 he learns that the you know it's yeah because the the thing with the um the message that that outed him um but you know you can also understand where where he's coming from um I don't know. I guess it's because, like, book versus film. In the in the book, I was way more like wondering if Cal, like, you know, yes, I knew, you know, I I would have been very surprised if they if it wasn't Bram who ended up with with Simon. That was also like when they did the the when he's like kissing a girl, you know, I'm thinking that's probably gonna be the the fake out. That's yeah. But the, yeah, you know when it, yeah when when we saw Bram typing an email, I was like, they're giving it away already. I, you know, in the in the book, it's only at the end. But then the next time he's imagining someone else. So, so yeah, but yeah, Cal, I, you know, I, in a lot of the book, I was really like, oh, it's got to be him, you know. And in the movie, I I didn't even notice him that much. But I guess that is the the difference. Yeah. Um, I guess that pretty much, um, yeah, that, so, so the, um, yeah, this will be my last Pride Month video for 2023, and, yeah, trans rights for human rights, Right, I almost forgot the 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 outro, which I did actually forget on one of my recent videos. Let's see. So yes, um, yes. What is your favorite, you know, just pride related movie or or TV show? And uh, yeah, let's see. And the the. You know, what is is there something coming up that you're really looking forward to that's going to be going to have uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, representation? Now, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. Uh, didn't want two more links to stuff like Realm of Plates. This is just a video for you watch on the screen right about now. So I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing thoughts on a movie. One talking about the most recent episode that is on, you know, hit Disney Plus of Secret Invasion. The most recent to hit Disney Plus in my area of True Lies. The most recent episode of The Clearing. And the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens. I do videos talking about animated Star Wars shows as soon as I reach and I think I think there's one coming next yes I expect to do at least one video talking Star Wars next week and once I'm completely caught up I will do current animated Disney plus Star Wars content as soon as it hits Disney plus and I am doing live action anime uh, live action Disney plus Star Wars the moment that it hits Disney Plus. So, yeah. Recently reviewed thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you are not. You can check out my back channel as well as my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.